y'all. Good to see y'all. Great to be here. Uh, listen, um, anybody have any trouble getting here? No battles at all? Well, you, you were covered in prayer. You guys covered everything in prayer? You know, First uh, Peter chapter 1, we are shielded by God's power through faith in Christ. Shielded. Come hell or high water, and by the way, hell is not a bad word, it's a bad place. Come hell or high water, you know, as they say, you, you know Psalm 91, you know the astounding victories and protection, but that does not negate that the enemy is real. That does not negate that uh, what's going on in France last night, 158 dead, six locations, that individuals from ISIS that screamed out the name of a demon territorial god, if you embrace a demon and you embrace its doctrines, it's going to turn you into a bloody killer. It's going to turn you into a slaughterer. No different than the underground Luciferian is uh, what we see in this ISIS and the movement there. Just like in the Old Testament in the embrace of Moloch and, and Shemosh and Nebo and all the rest, if you embrace a demon god and you embrace the teachings of a demon and you love what it wants and you do what it wants, then you're going to be opposed to everything that is of God and you're going to go slaughtering and you're going to go killing and the world has not yet seen the slaughtering that is coming. Now tomorrow I'm going to do something that um, I've kind of harped on for about a couple of years at conferences. I've been asking at conferences everywhere, how many have heard a sermon on the red horse in Revelation 6? Okay, praise God. And, and it's, it's been 99% nobody's ever heard a sermon or a message or could tell me the content. I mean, we could say white horse, red horse, black horse, and then, you know, pale green, chloros horse. Um, but um, the, it's not the color of the horses so much as it is the content of what they're all about. And so um, we can add it in today, but if you're around tomorrow, we are going to be doing this tomorrow at a church, uh, two services just on the red horse issue. But it does tie into what we're doing here today because those prophecies there are huge and they are global. What we see happening at 9-11, what we see happening in, in France right now, ISIS has also vowed to go into Russia because of Putin. And uh, what you're seeing in the Middle East, um, again, attachment to a demon god is... Uh, is uh, Listen, Rachel is right here, just now sitting down. She doesn't want me to do this. She set this whole thing up. She has set this whole thing up. We did this a year ago in, in the Cauga Falls area, and then uh, she wanted to do it again. And uh, she knows the battle sometimes that goes on with setting it up. So blessings to Rachel and all of those who helped and all those who worked. Tremendous. Um, so, um, what we're going to do today, we, listen, we gotta, I know we got about six hours of teaching, is that all right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to wear myself out, you wear your ink pens out, and your brains out, and your spirit out, and we'll, uh, we'll just grow together in the Lord. The Bible teaches when uh, two or three gather in his name, there he is in the midst. And uh, so we acknowledge the Lord, his presence, the spirit of God is here to teach and guide. The hand of God is here to do anything he needs to do against radical evil. But there's a reason why we've been given authority. There's a reason why Jesus said, I have given you authority. And that's in the perfect tense saying, I have given it at the moment of salvation and an abiding result. You have it right now. And you're able to trample, to tread on, to devastate the enemy and to overcome all the power. The word Nike, to with decisive victory, to come overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing will harm you. So spiritual warfare is scary when we don't know our side of the content. Okay. And um, please understand, over the years, there's been pastors that says, I, I'm not teaching on spiritual warfare. That always causes trouble. <laughs> what you've done is you've, uh, you've kicked the church into being weak and anemic yeah. and uh, un, un, unable. Um, when the majority of the body of Christ doesn't even know authority, doesn't understand the armor of God. I was with missionaries uh, Monday morning, this, just a few days ago, Monday morning and Tuesday morning down in uh, Columbus, here we've got 18-year-olds to 25-year-olds going to be sent here in two weeks. They're going to be sent into Iraq and to um, India, where they just had persecutions and martyrdom of Christians. And in that meeting on Monday morning like this, I said, how many here know your authority in Christ? One or two? How many understand the armor of God? 20%? How many know that you have it on? 5%? And in lands like India, where there are 300 million different gods and goddesses named, and where persecution is on the rise there too. 
So, and of course, with Iraq and Iran and all the rest, look what's happening in the world. Allah has never been God, is not God, never will be God. He is a territorial demon and may be the prince of Persia. Think about it, book of Daniel, did the prince of Persia die? The prince of Persia oversaw the entire Persian empire, the same locations of Jordan, Iraq, and Saudi Arabia, and all that today. The prince of Persia was the territory or national uh, demonic entity that uh, blocked the answer when the answer was coming to Daniel. That territorial entity in Babylon alone had 56 demonic temples where d different demon gods were worshipped and no doubt human sacrifice uh, and the rituals of Babylon were deep and broad and wide. The king himself worshipped a demon god named Nebo. So the prince of Persia, the Hebrew word meaning this ruler over the entire nation, uh, was in opposition. And in that opposition, there was bloodshed against the people of God, slaughtering of the people of God, and a desecration of the, uh, of the temple of God and the rest. Wherever you have uh, demon territorial beings and spirits and demons, of course, like where Satan had his throne and Antipas was martyred, the rise of dark side presence will bring violence and opposition to the body of Christ. Because there's a big shift, a big change. Most of it is hidden and underground because the restrainer has not been removed. God just has one simple, unstrained finger, the restrainer, holding back the sum total of the onslaught of the dark side. God is pretty big. Okay? There's no one bigger. That's simple theology, right? Infinite, immeasurable, uh, you know, all those words. Um, but uh, he's bigger and there's no one bigger. And as Francis Schaeffer used to say, he's the furthest one back. But he's beyond back because there is no beginning and there's no end in infin infinite presence. Satan already lost by the physics. Infinite, uncreated being, and then a finite, powerful, but finite being willed to take uh, God out and replace God and become God. How does a finite being become God? How does the finite become infinite? Even when he promised it in the fall of the human race. So you and I are here today not because, so listen, we're here today on this far side of the fall of the human race. 2,000 years, you know, uh, since the, uh, since the uh, last Adam came and, and died on the cross, God in human flesh gives his life for humanity. Never be ashamed to say that Jesus is the hero of humanity. He is. Red, yellow, black, or white, we are precious in the sight. That is true. And no greater value of a human being is echoed than looking at the feet of, you know, being at the feet of Jesus when he hangs on the cross. There is, the, there is the declaration of God saying uh, his infinite value for you. He wants you home. He wants you redeemed. He wants to fix the mess of sin. He wants to break you free from Satan. So whatever your background is today and, and wherever you come from today, I don't, I don't, it doesn't make any difference. There is a Savior that knows how to destroy the works of the devil and deliver you and change you and save you and heal you and restore you and bring you to, infinite, bring you to uh, indestructible immortality one day and seeing God face to face. And when we see him face to face, you know what he does? Did you read it in the prophecies? He reaches out his hand. This is the omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent God. This is all of a sudden when we're able to see with immortal bodies and we see God face to face. You can read about it in the end of the book of Revelation. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, he reaches out his hand and he wipes away the tears where there will be no more pain, no more dying, no more death, no more disease, all that kind of stuff. One thing the theologians forgot, omniscience, omnipresence, omnipotence, omnirelational. No greater person. Every hair of our head. Amen? Did you get a notebook today? I wanted to say this. Um, we, try, we really try to give everything to the world. Like nine, almost we're, we're going to close in on 19 million downloads in 100, 150 nations of the MP3s. And I think we're going to have this recorded possibly today and put it out also free. But the notebooks and stuff, of course, we can't. If you're here and you do not have funds for a notebook, um, I'll take care of it. So if you need one of these, run back to the table and get one. Uh, if you like using notes, okay? If you like using notes. I like using notes. I've been to a lot of conferences, a lot of things, because I always think a conference is where speakers will have a lot of content on one subject. They're pretty exciting. And you get to meet a lot of nice people around you. If you have anybody around you that begins to growl, just uh, that's either their stomach or it's a demon. So if it's their stomach, 
If it's their stomach, feed them. If it's a demon, rebuke it out of them and get them free, okay? And that's really, uh, and, and I'm, I know we're laughing, but the ministry of, didn't, didn't, aren't we supposed to help feed people when they're sick? So if, if you are hungry, and, so if you got hungry people, uh, um, feed them. And uh, if you got a demon in there growling, then uh, in the name of Jesus and of Nazareth, you know, get out. Jesus said, Ekbalo, get out. And that's important. Mark chapter 5 is the big picture. We'll take a look at it. If you have your um, little books like this, we're at, uh, I'm going to take a look at uh, page. Um, we're going to be on page. Let me see here what I've done with that. I wrote this so small, I might have to use these glasses a little bit. Um, <laughs> a hidden in uh, Morph Powers, Discernment Detection. This is page 21. Uh, we're not going to be able to go over every single thing here because uh, there's 27 hours. 25 hours are already up on MP3s on our website. If you want the other lectures from this, they're all free. All you do is download, open your little notebook, and, and go through them. We're going to go through so many of these uh, chapters today. And then there's a few more chapters, two or three more, that are not yet done. The next couple of Tuesday nights, we're going to go live on Tuesday nights, and they'll be uh, archived up later, so the entire book... We have volume one that has 25 hours already, and all the, and all the MP3s are you know, free to download. Um, but again, I like um, trying to use um, a little uh, writing because the Spirit of God, and, and again, as, we, uh, as you're listening today too, as we go through this, uh, the Spirit of God gives you scripture, gives you things, and speaks to your heart. So expect that today. Many of you are here to um, you know, add to what you already have, to add to your spiritual uh, armor and, and, and uh, weaponry and abilities and so forth. Uh, I'm going to be very, very strong about this today because we're so far behind in the body of Christ. Uh, we, are, we, are, uh, we are seeing what's happening in the world. And if you think things have uh, ramped up in the last 10 years alone, each year it's just going to speed up more. The closer we get, the more of the dark side, the more of the violence, the more of the bloodshed, the more of the conflict. But no matter what Satan does to bring his uh, collective out on the field, we've got to remember again that Jesus stands with all authority in heaven and earth. He's commissioned us to go. We've got to go to the highways and to the byways. We've got to get everybody saved, man. We've got to get everybody saved. we just got to get everybody. I wish those six uh, uh, little boys, 20-year-old uh, guys in, in France would have gotten saved instead of hooking up with Allah and doing what they did. They're in hell now. They're lost forever. And uh, that's, that is uh, the tragedy, the tragedy. God doesn't dance over anybody's eternal loss. Uh, he takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that we turn. Amen? Amen? That is God. He really wants us home. Number one, if you got that on page 21, the physics of the dark side. I mentioned the word ergon, and that's the word erges. That's the word works. Now, you mark down 2 Thessalonians 2 where you're going to read about concerning the parousia of the Lord and our being gathered, that day will not occur until the apostasia, this uh, rebellion, this revolt, and then the, um, the apocalypse of anthroposonomos, or the man of lawlessness, the man of sin, until he's revealed. Now, in that context, it's a huge context there. Uh, because we have this picture of um, the mysterium. The mystery of iniquity is already at work. We read that in the English. It's already at work. Well, what is the mystery of iniquity? The mysterium. This is the collective of the dark side, the sum total of the demons, the fallen angels. But as they are operative then in humanity, and as they're you know, doing the agenda you know, that they have for a global, you know, a global conquest, so when you read in 2 Thessalonians 2 um, concerning the mystery of iniquity that is already at work, and then it mentions about the apocalypse of the Antichrist, the great rebellion to come, and then it mentions Satan is already at work producing the Greek word pseudo, meaning counterfeit, signs, wonders, and miracles, and every sort of evil that is deceiving those who are perishing. They perish one reason. Because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Now, what's important to understand is that I, I, you, gotta, you know, I've, I've read polls where, you know, the, you know, again, studying the body of Christ in America, if that includes everybody they can think of, we're not talking about the real body of Christ. We're talking about a lot of religion, a lot of mainstream, you know, Christendom that may or may not be real. 
The body of Christ is the, is the collective of uh, those born of the Spirit of God, baptized into the body of Christ with the Spirit of God, identified by the Lord Jesus, the saved. Not everybody that goes to church is saved, right? Building's neat, but it doesn't save you. Stained glass windows are pretty, but they, they don't save you. You know, they don't. They simply don't. So we have a massive body of, of the believers all over, and, and we really do. But we also have um, a lot of uh, mystical Christianity, Christianity that by feeling, Christianity by religion, where salvation, the direct door to God, is uh, obscured by, and nullified by just the traditions of men and so forth. So it's necessary that we understand salvation and direct. Either you're saved or you're not. Romans chapter 8, if you have not the spirit of Christ, you are none of his. So either he dwells in you, and that's what salvation is. It's, I'll talk about this later. It's the fix that we need. You have no idea of the depth of the sin code, the sin nature, the death code, and the rights that Satan had. We'll talk about that this afternoon in our, because there's a deliverance in salvation even from that. And it's necessary. You're going to get that from the new age, taking a couple of rocks and um, you know, pounding them together? I don't think so. No wind catcher is going to give you salvation. You know, you're not going to get it from the trinkets of the counterfeit. So in the context of 2 Thessalonians 2, we have this uh, mysterium, this worldwide, global, collective of the dark side, operative. Satan is operative. It's all about bringing the great uh, rebellion and the unleashing of the Antichrist into the world. Then it involves Satan's um, Frog in the kettle approach, his layering of the world, his uh, constant uh, bringing of deception. So I want you to understand that much of the body of Christ and studies show, well, they're not sure that Satan is real. Once you, um, listen, it's one thing to look at the word of God and not believe it and just reject what it says. And that's like, you know, like it says in 1 John, if you don't believe it, I mean, you're, you're making God out to be a liar. You're saying, well, God, this is, this is a lie. And you can't avoid Satan. The pastor wrote me years ago, Years ago, and he said, because um, we were doing a conference like this years ago, and, and, and he wrote me a letter, and I, got, I, had, I opened up my desk, I couldn't believe it. He says, don't talk about Satan, don't say anything about him, because all it does is glorify him. I, wanted, I didn't write back, I didn't even want to spend the time, but I was like, well, okay, let's, let's cut out one-third of the scriptures in reference to the fall of the human race, in reference to the demonic side, you know, battling against Israel, in, in reference to 1 John 3, 8. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Amen. He's alive. He's on the earth. Hal Lindsey said it years ago, alive and well on the planet. He's alive. He ain't well. That's right. Something went wrong up there, you know. <laughs> People ask me, you know, years ago, what do you think of, you know, Satan's nature? Did he go insane? And, and the truth is, when you think about it, if you, if you were, like, going to do some kind of psychological profile, I mean, I'd like to see an FBI uh, uh, profile or profile of Satan who's able to masquerade. You, you know what? He's suprahuman. When he entered the garden, let's, let's talk about Satan for a second. The insurrection in the heavenlies was astounding. Ezekiel 28, when we read that he's perfect in all of his ways, and all of a sudden we read, until wickedness was found in him. The word wickedness isn't the Greek word harmatia for sinning, missing the mark. It is the Hebrew word for a violent, known, rebellious, calculated uh, insurrection against God. He, and we read then, his sanctuaries were desecrated. It's almost as though in his leaving his high position as the anointed covered in cherub, as he left that position, thinking that you can go higher, a complete disintegration of his being. If he has DNA, it would be a total alteration. Jesus said later of him concerning his nature, there is no truth, not an iota dwelling still in him. You ever light one of those stick matches to light a bonfire? And then finally it burns down. You can't relight it, can you? So blackened. That's the concept, Des desecrating his sanctuaries. He completely was altered. Because of what he did in bringing down a third of the, you know, the angels in, in, in their, their own fall, we have um, not only the origins of radical evil, and hear me clearly, theologians, man didn't sin on his own. You know, humanity just said, you know, Adam, they didn't just rise up one day and say, hey, we're going to sin against God. 
It was from an outside source that came in and challenged the human race, challenged the, what some would call the federal head, uh, just the head of the human race, challenged the lineage of the entire human race. To challenge them was to challenge the race. Romans 5, by one man's sin, death entered the world, and death passed upon all because all have sinned. So it would have been the same if, if you were there, I were there, in that, in that sense of concept and theology. But we have this, um, this breaking in. Now here's, here's what we need to understand about how important the Word of God is. And, I, and listen, we, got, we, got, we, can, we can sit here and say, the Word of God is infallible, it is inerrant, that, that's a given to me. But it is the most supranatural, powerful book in all of human history. All the stuff the dark side's doing, cop, you know, copying the concept of inspired writings, like the Quran, um, then you have the presence of demons operating. Whereas in the Word of God, you have the presence of the Spirit of God operating. He knows His Word backward and forward. He knows how to speak it to you clearly. He's never brought back a verse to your memory out of context, if it's the Spirit of God, right? Okay, never. So we, we have to understand, Spirit of God, this is, also, this is his book. God gave one singular verse to the human race. Don't do this. If you do this, you will die. The Hebrew says, in dying, you shall die. One singular shield. One verse. Could have done it. Did, she, did not Eve quote that verse? But God did say... The problem was her interaction. So this one comes, the fallen cherub comes, he's blackened, in, uh, and I believe the whole uh, fallen, uh, of the demonic and the fallen, I, I mean, I believe, in all of our experience anyway, that they would be gnarly and ugly and gross and, and monstrous. But they have the ability to metaskidzmadzatai. Have you heard me say that? I just like the word. It's cool to say it, metaskidzmadzatai. <laughs> The power to uh, morph presence without changing nature. Because they can't change their nature. And not only they can't change their nature, they don't will to. So you never have to have sympathy for the devil, you know, Rolling Stones. You don't have to have sympathy for the devil at all, nor the demons. You ever see Jesus, you know, Jesus, oh, you know, like poor demon? You know, you've never seen any kind of mercy or sympathy. Because there is no change in them, nor can there be. They cannot be saved, nor do they want to be saved. There is no biblical revelation that any demons or Satan himself ever said, boy, I wish I wouldn't have done this. Look what it's done. Oh, good. You know, woe is me. Give me some Prozac. <laughs> they are what they are by choice. And they are what they are in fixed nature. Even when it's all over, at the end of the 1,000-year millennial reign of Christ, Satan's let out of the abyss just for a moment. What's he do? What his nature is. He wants to create another insurrection. And then he's eliminated forever. And there's only one that can eliminate him. CIA can't do it. The, the, the Defense Department can't do it. You know, all of the intelligence agencies of the world can't do it. You can't stop Satan that way. They're not going to be able to stop the Antichrist. They're not going to be able to stop what's going on right now. The human race is in trouble, boy. The human race is in trouble because of the urges, the works. Now, we read in Philippians, it is God who is at work in you to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Praise God for that. Inside of me, the Spirit of God is moving and speaking and guiding and directing me. You know, obey, get in the word, Russ. You know, step out in the word, Russ. Obey the word, Russ. Love Je the Spirit of God is guiding you in that one direction. If we, don't, uh, if we don't get in the way of growth, sanctification, that, that process, that dynamic process of making us like Christ and the, have the ability to bear the fruit of Christ, if we don't get in the way, buddy, we're going to do pretty good. You're going to become strong. You're going to become powerful. You're going to become immovable. You're going to bear fruit. You're going to win souls, just like we were meant to. But a lot of us weren't given the great, greatest discipleship along the way, were we? We, we, weren't, we were taught five things, but we weren't taught the other five things. It's true. The physics of the dark side involve the works of Satan. He is at work. This is revealed 2,000 years ago in Thessalonians 2. He is at work in the operation of developing a worldwide scheme. It was revealed 2,600 years ago in the book of Daniel that, that a huge global order is going to come that's terrifying, trampling down, unlike anything in human history. It's coming. 
Revelation 13 echoes Daniel in, refer, in, in reference to a beast system. God uses terms purposely. Beast, therion. This political, military, economic. It's in the shadows, but you've got to understand it's coming. And nothing's going to stop it. Not, not the United States, not Russia. No one's going to stop what's coming. It's a little deeper than ISIS and the rest of the things. It's there. And I think we're very close to it, but that's where the ergeis, the ergon, the works of Satan, that he is working. Point number two, the power of to be stealth. In Colossians 1, we read that Christ created all things visible and invisible. The missionary young folks Monday asked me, Russ, have you ever, out of all these years of doing deliverance and having demons scream at you and, you know, kicking them out of people's lives and the rest, and I just want you to know, I mean, I've been saying this for the last year, I'm sick of demons, I'm sick of that. Please understand, people call me on the radio, oh, Russ, he, he's an exorcist. No, I'm, I'm a believer in Jesus that wants to be a soul winner. Just want to be a soul winner. Want to win as many people to, to Jesus as I can before I'm out of here. But in that context... Kingdom evangelism involves deliverance and healing and feed them and clothe them and help them and then disciple them and then equip them and then send them, right? So it involves all of that, and um, that's, that's part of the issue. But the demonic realm, they asked me on Monday I think, and Tuesday, um, have you ever seen a demon? And I said, well, not, not really. If you mean like looking here, not really have I seen a demon. Have I seen them through a person look at me and speak and yell my name? And, you know, one demon through a police officer here in the greater Akron area, the wife called us over, and the demon took over, and he looked right at me and go, he's making this weird sound. They're weird. They're this weird sound. And, and uh, he goes, um, Dennis Dar, we know you. Just something like that. It's kind of weird. It's not that I want to mimic a demon, but um, sometimes they talk really weird. Um, and they growl and they do all kinds of stuff, but they can talk in all kinds of languages. But to take over a human being and then look at... Now, that's how I've seen them primarily, like Jesus and the disciples. So I'm not really so much... I mean, sometimes you think, well, you see something here, I know something's coming to my room. Holy Spirit discernment for us should be huge. We've got God, the Holy Spirit. You can't get bigger than that. You know why they've got to keep getting more demons and more demons and more... You know, the maguses and the wizards, they're getting more demons and more spirits because they're all finite beings. They had to keep adding up more and more. The sum, if, if one person can get all of the demons of hell in them, and Satan himself, it would not equal the infinite nature, the immortal nature, the presence of, 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 of God the Holy Spirit. So 1 John 4 is correct. Greater, megos, like a huge mountain, is he who is in you than the pebble of Satan in the world. That's the way God pictures it. You're walking around with Christ in you, the Spirit of God in you. You're walking around giving authority to do something with it. If you claim you've got the authority but don't do anything with it, well, someone's going to kick you in the tail. Say, get going, okay? And we need that sometimes. We need that sometimes. The dark side is stealth. Can they be in the building? I've heard people, oh, I can't be in the church building. The It's holy. Come on, give me a break. Um... One demonized person walking in the room, the demon's in the room. Now, if it's a good church, they're in trouble. I had a demonized, one of these demonized, highly committed Satanists, underground Satanists said, the kind of churches we don't like is ones that rely on the Holy Spirit and they have discernment. We can get by, we can, we can run games and play games when there's churches that are not aware and they don't know what's going on. We can play games with that. But where they're waiting on the Holy Spirit, his presence is in the church, uh, we we got to get out of there. We can't handle that. You know why? They're going to be revealed. The presence of God forces manifestation at times. Yeah. Might be one this afternoon. Who knows? It's okay. <laughs> when I used to pastor locally, it was in a church exactly this size, probably, and had the exact same color pews, by the way. We used to call it the orange church because we had a <laughs> church that had green pew. We call it the green church. Well, at the Orange Church, I was just doing some stuff up front, came right here. Some people from Akron Bible Church brought in a girl, shoved her through the doors of the, of the church, and all of a sudden, a demon spoke and says, you cannot have her! And I looked up, and I was like, I see visitors in the church. I see this big old biker in the back back there, it's unsaved. And I'm like, oh, here we go. So I start to walk down thing. 
This person comes a little closer, and this demon's kind of snarling out and growling. And uh, I, got, I got a little too close because they, they launched out at me, whatever. But I think part of it was I was distracted by the biker. His eyes were this big. He was terrified. He was terrified. You could take all your patches off, throw your knives. You know, you ain't gonna, he was terrified. It was funny. I should have just put up, you better get saved now, buddy. <laughs> and sometimes people that see that get saved right away. But um, what happened was, you know, we had to deal with that and command that, and, and the whole church just began to sing and worship, and people began to pray, and, and nobody, ran, no, no believer ran out. And the, the astounding, felt, conscious presence of the Holy Spirit, God's presence was there. And eventually this little girl got delivered, and she had a lot of things that occurred. But I want you to understand that the Ergon, he's at work. He's at work doing things. The invisibility sense that he's possessing people and using people. Look at the next one, the power to design. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2.11, uh, we read about uh, that we're not ignorant. We, we shouldn't be ignorant of his schemes, devices, his wiles, his methods. Paul said we are not ignorant. The Greek word ignorant, agnegno, is uh, simply um, by, because he, what, he's, what Paul is saying is, by willful choice, we've decided not to be ignorant of the devil's schemes so that he might not outwit us. That was a good thing. To be ignorant of the devil's schemes is a setup for battle in which you use, lose again and again. So it's, it, you become stronger and more aware the more you understand from a biblical perspective and you're gra grabbing the word of God in your life. And a little missionary girl asked me on Tuesday morning, after hearing all that we did for those two mornings, she said, is there any way to get, get away from them? <laughs> I mean, she was afraid. Yeah. And I said, no. Well, I said, no, in the sense, if you mean hiding in the closet, like in a movie, <laughs> did they ever get away from Freddy? I hate that Freddy. I hate that Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> it represents a lot of what the dark side is about, like Slender, like Slender Man, in the charged writings of Slender Man. Little girls believing it and getting demonized and, and so forth. Youngstown is here. Youngstown is showing up today. <laughs> Good to see you. We are in a point um, three, design. Not only is there design for you, like when, in the garden, when, when, when Satan came and masqueraded as a shining one and engaged, he was, by design, it was all by design. And God knew he was coming, and, and God gave a shield of scripture. Listen, if you take and circle Genesis 3 and then go to 1 John chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 14, the second half, I write to you young men, young believers, because you are strong, word meaning you're mighty, you're strong, you have overcome the evil one, Nike, with decisive victory, you have overcome the evil one because the word of God lives, minno, dwells in you. You've believed it, you are using it. You are living by it. The word of God not only is a revelation, and when we believe, true belief puts, it, puts us into action and obedience to it, but it becomes operative. In Thessalonians, it talks about the word of God as it actually is, not the word of men. You believe it, and it is at work, ergase, it is at work in you who believe it, receive it, and use it. James 1, if you, don't, if you look at it and don't put it in your life, what, who's deceived? You are. If you take it and put it into practice, you're blessed. But in 1 John 2.14, you are strong. The, the word of God in your life relates to spiritual warfare and victory. Powerful victory for you. I don't know all the devil does. I can't watch behind me. I don't know where he's at. I don't, you know, but you know, like in, in, in the disciples with Jesus, uh, Simon, Simon, they're all eating, fellowshipping with the Son of God in their midst. Simon, Simon, Satan is just now asked, to sift you as wheat. And the word you there is plural in the Greek, meaning all of you guys. He has just asked to destroy all of you guys. But I prayed for all of you guys that you know your faith wouldn't fail, that when you return, you'll strengthen your brethren. Um, and all of a sudden, Satan struck. Did they know he entered the room? Did they know that was the exact same room that we can read about in, 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 in John's Gospel uh, 13, where it says, Satan entered into him, and he got up and went out to betray the Son of God. 
How, did they see that? Did they know that Satan entered the room? Did, he, did they know that there was any, was there any detection from them? No. Here's, here's your point. No matter who it is, no matter how stealthy they are, they can't get around Jesus. The eyes of the Lord range too far. You know, nothing is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered. You've got to understand, infinite eyes, the ability of God to know the hairs in your head, the cares of your life, the tears and what they mean. He knows, the Spirit of God knows where every demon is and what they're doing. And I would say one-third or more of the biblical prophecies in relation to the last days is the part that reveals Satan's plan in the world. That's the biggest missing point in the prophecy books. In prophecy, we have what God is going to do, what man is going to do in the future. And a huge portion is God ripping open hell's kitchen, seeing what they're going to do, and saying, hey, guys, here's a heads up. Here's the intelligence uh, threat information for you to be aware of, to have, to have eyes that see, to know how things are going in the world. Spirit-lit lit eyes is when we have, you know, biblically lit eyes. And prophecy gives us enormous insight, not just to the origins of Satan or the nature, but method, and here's the biggest missing point, the agenda. Satan can have an agenda over you, an assignment over you can have an assignment, but you understand the global agenda. Revelation 12, the dragon, the dragon, the dragon, the dragon, the dragon. One chapter alone. Well, who, who is the dragon in that chapter? Well, that's China. No, it's not. That's allegory. Don't get into allegory. It says right in the chapter, in the context, the dragon is the ancient serpent. He is Diabolos. He is Satan. Okay? Tells you right there what, he, what it is. But this picture, and again in scripture, huge megas dracon. God is saying, listen, in the end, in the very end, this, this manifesting presence of the enemy is going to be huge. And he's out to deceive, to lead the whole world astray. It is a global agenda. The satanic collective, the mystery, the mystery of iniquity, the collective of the fallen angels and demons on a global scale, they know what they're doing. They're doing it by design, far beyond the Nazis and the final solution, far beyond the design of ISIS and anybody else. You've got to understand the supernatural ability for them to design, have an agenda, and uh, we read in, in the book of Daniel 2,600 years ago, um, not by human hands, meaning by uh, the power of, the, the, the dark side power manifesting is going to bring it about. Revelation 13, when the Antichrist, the Theodron, the beast, and the beast system comes forward, what does it say? The dragon gives him his power. It's real. Real power. You've been given authority to overcome all the power of the evil one, and nothing will harm you. Revelation 12 also says in 11, they overcame him, the dragon by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They didn't love their lives so much as to shrink from death, right? This is a huge, huge prophetic picture, not only of Satan, how huge in the end of days he's going to be in the world, but of the believers that are going to you know, stand. Um, you know, and that's, that's, that's where we are. How are you standing? How are you standing? Today, the blood of the Lamb and the, and the testimony of Jesus. That testimony is huge. There's power in your testimony. People get saved because of it. They get saved because of what has happened in your life and your proclamation of the gospel. Um, I don't worry about those who argue with me and, and fight with me. And uh, I, Richard Dawkins, I don't care if he wants to argue and be mad at God. He, you know what? Ask Richard Dawkins, where'd we come from? I don't know. Where are we going? I don't know. Why are we here? I don't know. You don't know much. <laughs> For a big old intellectual professor, you know, that wrote a book, The God Delusion, you don't know much. Other than you're mad at God, you don't know him. If you knew him, you wouldn't be speaking the way you did. How many here spoke... <laughs> bad of God before you got saved. And then when you got saved, you can't but speak anything good. When I got saved, I've never used the name of the Lord in vain that I know of. Before I got saved, if anybody knows Cheech and Chong, yes. some of you are worse, right? I'm not the only big sinner. There's some big sinners in here. Okay? Where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Romans 6. No matter how big of a sinner you've been, how gross and bad you've been, and all your junk, if you want that on you, that's on your head. If you want it off of you, the blood of the Lamb, the Lord Jesus can lift it, take it, wash you, cleanse you, change you from the inside out. 
And that's the biggest spiritual warfare at all, the battle for our human soul. Now, it's true that, that Satan's designs is to cripple up believers along the way, and we're, we're going to talk about that. But understand that there, there's a work going on. They're, they're operating in stealth. Um, it's by design. And then the next one, we say this. They have the ability to transfigure. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. Satan is also able to masquerade like an angel of light. And this is uh, probably the New Age movement. It's a billion worldwide by now because it's worldwide. And it's the uh, largest counterfeit to Christianity in the history of the church. And there's no particular one leader. It's just all eclectic spirituality, you know, and, and all the New Agers have been doing this for years and years. Drugs, pothead, you know, all the stuff they want to do. You know, spirits, Reiki, channeling, you know, charged stones, sacred places. You know, try everything out. Everything, keep, keep looking, keep looking. None of it led them to God. They don't know God. And the New Age... The evidence of the spirit of Antichrist, you know what it is? Any system that teaches that Christ is not God and that he cannot save you directly. Mormonism. Jehovah Witnesses. The New Age Movement. So wherever you see, like in the Quran, like in Joseph uh, Smith's writings, you can go to all these writings. Wherever there is a denial of the deity, there's an immediate denial of direct salvation in the Savior. That's the spirit of Antichrist. He's never going to tell you that he is God in human flesh. He's the Savior. You know, turn to him. You know, the spirit of God's going to point everybody, all of Scripture, all even prophecy points to Christ, ultimately. Every spirit-filled believer in the book of Acts, man, they were just Jesus-centered. They are just pointing to Christ. There's no one huger, no one bigger. He is the, uh, he is the icon of God, the exact representation. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. The God of this age, Aeon, this time period, he blinds the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the glory of the gospel of Christ, who is the icon, the image, the exact visible image of God on, on, the, on the planet when he was here. Look what it says. Look what it reveals. He's at work. There's physics. The word blind means... <laughs> More than just blowing smoke. Uh, Mayfair Road, you ever go down Mayfair Road in the winter when it's snow drifts are up and it's, the snow is coming down? You ever have to stop right in the middle of the road? You're snow blind. You can't see two feet in front of you. The snow is so thick and so coming down and so blowing. You know, there might be a two-ton vehicle in front of you two feet away, but you can't see it. That's the idea of Satan blinding the minds of unbelievers. He's operative in that. How is an unbeliever going to hear? Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God that can cut through this. You can't get saved without hearing. How blessed are the feet of those who, you know, share the good news. You got to understand that this is, nobody can, you know, people say, why aren't a lot of people getting saved? Because a lot of people aren't witnessing to them. Okay? Okay. Um, transfigure, metaskizmazatai, the ability to change their, 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 their presence, uh, their appearance, to morph an angel of light. They can be, I, they can be Uncle Freddy, Grandma you know, Susie. They can be an alien. They can be an ascended mass. They could morph into whatever they perceive is needed to bring deception without changing their nature or their agenda in the deception. So a billion new agers are, you know, you know, connecting with uh, spirits, spirit guides, and, and the necromancers that are out are, are off the charts in numbers. We'll look at that in a minute. And we just came from the, we even, even tapped the underground, the, the real underground yet. Um, next one is um, the counterfeit. All of the gifts and workings of God, 2, Corinth, or 2 Thessalonians 2, Satan is at work in the end of days to counterfeit Signs, wonders, and miracles. You know how many people we dealt with demonized a demon that gave them counterfeit tongues, languages? Cast the demon out, they no longer do that. The ability, counterfeit to the word of knowledge. Remember the girl that was, the demon was cast out of the girl in the book of Acts? She was able to, when she was being, uh, making money for the guys, she was predicting future things. I mean, there's some, there's charlatans around us, but there are re- people that have spirit guides um, and I believe Sylvia Brown had a spirit guide. She acknowledges that I read her material. She acknowledges it. She had a name for it. She, it first came to her by intrusion. She didn't want it at first. But it became her number one. And her spirit guide interpreted scriptures for her. Her spirit guide gave her a new understanding of Jesus. Her spirit guide gave her predictions. 
about 17% accuracy in which she, she, was, she was completely discredited over many of her predictions. A spirit guide. I have a spirit guide. He is named Holy Spirit. I don't need the trinkets of the new age or the fallen spirits. Megos, huge, is God the Holy Spirit in you. And the giftings that God will give, whatever the giftings are that God has given you, they are supernatural. They are given by the Spirit of God. They're operating His power and manifest His presence and mercy and, and grace to people. Whereas the other side, it's all about deception, preoccupation, keeping them blinded so they can't see. Millions of New Agers and psychics and uh, remote viewers and astro projectors and Wiccans and Druids and Santeria and you go all down all the list you got and you got in, in, in Hinduism and worldwide Islam uh, you have Islam submit to this being he doesn't want you to know him he declares in the Quran he's not a personal being you can't know him just submit it's exactly the nature of a demon. And when Muhammad was getting the revelations, he would foam with the mouth, fall to the ground, and pass out. Doesn't sound like any of the biblical writers that were getting the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to write scripture. Not one of them passed out, fell down, foamed to the mouth, missed time. Not one of them. The demonic side has to do it differently. God does it perfectly. They do it imperfectly, but they do it. And there is power behind it when you're vulnerable. Um, counterfeit signs, wonders, miracles. Let me say something to the body of Christ here. Never back away from the supernatural workings of the Holy Spirit of God verified by Scripture just because the dark side is doing counterfeit. What the world needs to see is the genuine and the real. Not mocked up emotional junk that looks goofy, uh, but the real stuff as you see in the book of Acts. I happen to believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, forever. Anything you see in the book of Acts, God can still do this today. See, so I happen to believe that he could even, like Philip in Acts chapter 8, he transported him from one place to another in evangelism. Now, I'm not saying I walk around saying, God, trans I've never been transported. We had to fly on planes to get to France, and we had to ride on this eight-hour bus, you know, train, eight hours of the train down to Carcassonne and Esperanza and get to Bugarash Mountain, where supposedly 20,000 New Agers are waiting for the end of the world. We were going down there to witness. And the French police and the French uh, secret uh, police kicked most of them out because they were afraid of another solar temple suicide. But the Russians and the Federation news were there in the little alien cafe in Bugarash. Uh, I, I don't even want to go into that, but the Russians were like, well, Americans, why are you here? I go, dobre utra. They're like, oh, you speak it, you're Russian. And that's the only thing I knew. Um, <laughs> the rest was, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, Niet, I know Niet. And so they uh, said, come outside, come outside. They put me where the, the upside down mountain, you know, that's supposed to be the magic mountain. The, the Nazis dug into it to find some. Mossad dug into it to find something. But um, they wanted to know. They wanted, the Russian people are so into spiritual things. Yeah. Deception. And so uh, they had me in the mountains behind her talking, and I'm sharing, uh, this is all about deception. I'm trying to just share, this is, I, don't know what, I don't know where this is going to go. I'm just, this is all about deception, and Jesus Christ is, and so I just go through this whole litany of things, and then about uh, six months later, somebody sent me the clip on Russian Federation news that went to 500 million people, they said. The only problem was it was in Russian. I don't know what I said. <laughs> So you know how it is. They can be saying, uh, it can be like, he, you know, he, he, I don't know what they had me saying. I wish I, I wish I could find out someday. I hope it was what I really said. But uh, the power to assimilate, you can look at 1 Timothy 4, 1 on down, where not only is spiritual demon, you know, the planos demons come, but they want to get into some to use them as vessels to write through them, to give inspired uh, writings, the dake demonoia, doctrines of demons. A lot of those books are out today. Uh, you know, uh, Alice Bailey is one of the worst uh, set of 21 volumes. Uh, some of the most charged books I've ever seen. I mean, more so than the Quran, I believe. One of her books, The Externalization of the Hierarchy, Alice Bailey, who, who uh, didn't want this entity, but eventually the entity, she allowed it to come in, and they said fused with her and dictated for eight hours a day in writing these books that became the foundational writings of the New Age. United Nations spiritual... Their whole spiritual platform is on the writings of Alice Bailey. Wow. High demonized writings. The externalization of hierarchy is a demon explaining their, their, their decades of, um, of spiritual layering of the earth until the world teacher comes. 
It's almost reading their plan. You can't read that book without being prayed up. I'm just telling you. It is a highly charged book, the externalization of the hierarchy. I won't quote it publicly, um, nor any demonic writings. I don't want to. I'll, I'll talk about them, but I won't want to quote them. But, but they, they assimilate people like that to use them, and thousands of people have been done. That. That's true in, among the ufologists, and uh, that's true of all kinds of individuals now that have been spiritually guided, demonically spirit guides, guiding them to write materials and then to influence others and to draw them in. Uh, that's also true in Revelation 12 when we talk about assimilation. Once again, you read the Satan and his angels, or the, the dragon, who seeks to lead. Please don't miss this. This should be in every board meeting in every church. Our, our board meetings should be war rooms. It really is a battle for the souls, and that's how it's going to be in the very end of days. I don't know how much time we have, a year, uh, 10 years. I don't know that, but I believe we're at the very end. I don't believe I'm going to see, you know, I'm not, I don't, I don't, maybe I'll be 80 someday. I told my daughter, when I turn 80... And I only have two teeth left. Sit me in the back seat because when she was two and three, she had two teeth set in the back seat. And I would look at her through the mirror. And I said, someday this is going to catch up with you, girl. I would sit back there smiling with two teeth. And you're going to have to drive me around everywhere. And I'm going to have fun at 80. So have fun. Bodies wear out, wasting away. I don't like this. I got one kidney left, pins in my shoulder, slower. I can't run like I used to. Still have a little brace on my ankle. And, and, and the writing the, the seems to get smaller every year. <laughs> Where am I? Who am I? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so assimilation, the idea of the, satanic, the Satan's presence in the world and all that he's doing is to assimilate, to, uh, to bring into, by that deception, to bring the sum total of the world. You understand, they are global in their quest. Global in their quest. Let's turn over the page, and uh, if, you have, if you need to. Ne seven is the power to deceive. That's a given, 1 Timothy 4, 1. The spirits there are called planos. They're coming to deceive. Uh, the first words out of Jesus' mouth in Matthew 24. Tell us about the end of the age and your coming, they asked him. What was the first words? Let no one deceive you. Deception is the number one issue at the end of days. And the broader the deception, the broader the destruction. Because you're talking about later on, billions will die. It will seem like almost a, 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 uh, a human extinction, the feelings of it. An environmental extinction. Because the deeper and broader the satanic plot and plan comes into the world, the greater destruction it brings. If you let spirit guides and supernatural things that aren't from God and you think it's cool and supernatural things into your life, the guarantee is eventual destruction. Aleister Crowley, the beast, the big cult writer that more people believe in today than when he was alive, he died diseased, depressed, insane. Nietzsche that spoke against Christ in the power of the will that Hitler read died depressed and, and lost and, and empty. What do you do when you're dying? I've been by the bedsides of those who were dying that had, did not have Christ. They have nothing. There's no spirit of God that echoed for years your mind. Romans 8, the, his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Amen. The spirit of adoption. There's witness. Ephesians chapter 2, we read about how the Spirit of God is the deposit inside, guaranteeing the coming indestructible immortality that's coming. If there's something bigger than Jesus, tell me now. How huge he is. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus. I told, the, um, I told this, where was I at when I told this? Uh, uh, maybe at our house. We had a meeting at our house a week ago. Uh, and most of the folks <laughs> didn't know the hymn, I Stand Amazed. You know that hymn? I Stand Amazed in the... Just get it and sing it today. Pick up the hymn book later on, take a look at it. It's huge. When nobody's around the house, and I, I make sure nobody's in the house. <laughs> but I sing. I can sing good when nobody's around. <laughs> Not even the dogs believe me on that one. If they howl or look at you weird. 
So the power to deceive is big, it's huge, it's supernatural. This is the issue of 2 Thessalonians 2. This is the issue of the second chapter of 1 John. This is how we know it's the last eschaton, the last hour in human history. Because many antichrists have gone out and the antichrist is coming. I write to you because of those who are trying to lead you astray. That's the book of 1 John. You want a book that gives you black and white spirituality, clear? This is how you recognize the spirit of error against the spirit of truth. That's what we're told in 1 John 4. Having the content of that ability gives, heightens your discernment to know the difference. The assumption in that scripture is that Christians can recognize and know the difference between the spirit of error that's operative and the spirit of God, the spirit of truth that is operative. Test the spirits to see whether they're of God. We proclaim that, but how do you do that? There's a felt discernment, there's a doctrinal issue, and then the centrality of Christ. No, no spirit, spirit of Antichrist, will ever promote Jesus as God in human flesh or Savior. It's the evidence of the spirit of Antichrist. Amen. Any cult you look at that teaches that Jesus is not God, I mean, that's why you label them a cult. I was out with the Mormons in Utah and dealing with some of the leader, one of the leaders there one time and, and, uh, for quite a bit of the day. Most sanitized cult that I've ever met. Nice people, moral Dress nicer than me. I asked him if he had his magic underwear on. I did. He looked at me and he goes, yes, Russ, I did. I said, okay. I said, I, I, have, this, I have a shielding. First Peter chapter 1, I am shielded by God's power through faith in Christ. He kept calling me his brother. I was not. I loved him. I kept sharing the gospel. You know what the tactic was? I see that you're still seeking truth. Yeah. I, I, every time I, I said, no, Don, I know the truth. Jesus Christ, he's in my life. How about you? He kept asking me, would you read the Book of Mormon again? I said, I have no problem with reading the Book of Mormon again if you'll put it down for a month and read only the gospels. Yeah. I can't do that. I finally talked him into it towards the end. He promised he would. I even said, take me to the, 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 the temple, you know, the big temple there in, in Utah, you know. Take me in. Ross, I can't do that. You said I'm your brother. I can't take you. I got the Holy Spirit in me. God's in me. I can't take you in there, Russ. You have to have a bishop recommend. So do you know any bishops? Yeah. Well, go call them. I want to go in. Russ, I can't take you in there. That's when I said, do you have your magic in your <laughs> No salvation there. There's no salvation. They don't know Jesus. I said, let's get down and pray and let the Holy Spirit help us in prayer. Let's worship. You know, let's, let's do that. Have you ever been inside of a Jehovah Witness meeting? Do they sing and praise God and have the power of the Holy Spirit there? Is there a liberation? I uh, talked to, and I wish I would have interviewed years ago, a girl that was raised in all of it. She said, well, you have no idea. Because she's coming to our church. She's saved. She's born again. She says, you have no idea. There, there's no spirit of God in us. It's just empty. It's just dry. It's just words. It's just, well, maybe spiritual deception. It's amazing. It's amazing. The power to um, enter into a human personality, number eight. Mark 5, Acts 16, take a look at those. Mark 5, total possession, diaminozoid. Total possession. Body, soul, mind, will, he couldn't, he couldn't help himself. He was completely possessed. Naked, cutting himself, living among the tombs, howling, supernaturally strong to break chains. Nobody, nobody could, you couldn't put him in a psych ward. You'd have to pump him full of you know, Thorazine or something. What's that going to do? Just incapacitate. It's going to take the body, and, and the demon's not going to be able to use the body very well, but when the drugs way, you know, go away, the demon's still there, right? The demons had a sense, someone's coming. <laughs> it's the Son of God. The demon went running out and falls to the ground screaming, you know, what have you come to do to torture us? Every demon I've ever met through a person knows there's a coming judgment. Two things they know. They know there's a coming judgment, and they know that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. He is God. He is the Savior, and they're afraid of him. They're afraid of him. By the way, they also know about the abyss. They all know about the abyss. Maybe we'll get into that today sometime. Number nine, the power to deceive, the power to use a deceived and controlled person. So I'm going to say that psychics and, and readers of the dead and the people that write the books inspired by a demon, you understand how they embrace the deception, acquire the deception, and then they, then they become the uh, promoters of it. 
you know, all over the world. And, and I'm going to tell you this, there's going to be more and more of them that are going to be able to do demonstrative supernatural things. Sai Baba, India, you know, they're going to people, there's going to be individuals that can do healings and powerful things and supernatural things. And while we're here, and if that happens in front of us, we're able to stand up and call it down. Stop this in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. You know you can stop that. You understand your authority overrides theirs. People sometimes say to me, uh, well, what if, they, what if the demon says, I have authority, I have a right to be here? I say, I have authority, I have a right to take that right away. I'm not going to let them have a right. We'll talk about that later on, because that, 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 um, that, that kind of burns my britches when, when people, well, they have a right, the demons have a right to be there, so I've got to let them alone. Really? Jesus never asked anybody if they wanted delivered. Nor did an apostle, nor did anybody else. Nobody ever asked. When the manifestation occurred, they just did it, and the words were, ek or ek balo, get out of here. We'll talk about where to send them later. There's all kinds of places, you know, I send you to the cage. Where's the cage? Send you to the abyss. I said that one time. We're going to send you to the abyss if you don't, you know, respond. And this demon responded, freak. I'm just going to say freaked out. I'll get out of here, and, and then you take the rest of them with you. Get out in the name of Jesus. Uh, they know about the abyss. They really do. Um, so we're going to have in the world that we have, and based on for the prophecy of uh, First Timothy four one on down, uh, based on Second uh, uh, Thessalonians two with the counterfeit miracle signs wonders, it's going to come through people that are being used. Um, and here's part of the issue too: uh, How does the Holy Spirit say it in First First uh, Timothy four one? The Spirit expressly says, right? Or the word means definitively says. In the Greek, it means the Spirit of God has raised his voice and has declared definitively, then in the end of days, planos, a category of demons, a species of demons. Planos spirits are coming to deceive the many. Then they're going to get into some and use them as vessels to write, to write, the dake de manoia. It's written 2,000 years ago. We're the ones with the heads up. The more of biblical prophecy you have in your heart and mind and know well, the less you're going to be surprised at what's going on in the world. And the better you're going to be able to say to the rest of the world that's confused when they're looking at Nostradamus and looking at Edgar Cayce and looking at all the junk trinket stuff out there, then you're going to be able to stand like Peter on the day of Pentecost. You know what he did when, the, when power came? This is that which the prophet Joel spoke about. A powerful declaration. This so what I see today in the New Age movement, I can say, this is that which the Spirit of God said, the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit said. You know, um, when you read the book of Hebrews, there's times when they quote Scripture, the Word of God says, okay, or the Scripture says. But I like in Hebrews how it works. In quoting the Old Testament, the writer said, the Holy Spirit says. The Word of God you have in your hand is the language of the Holy Spirit. Memorize it word perfect and use it that way when you speak it in and so forth. The Holy Spirit says and quotes scripture. And the demons, it, it's, like a, it's like a sledgehammer. They don't, want, they don't want truth. They're there to oppose it. On the extended uh, use of the demon, three other things. They'll use people to speak through them. First John 4, test the spirits to see what, all because of false prophets. Inspired by demons to speak. I think Hitler, when he spoke, have you seen him? I'm, I'm telling you, in my personal opinion, there is a supernatural dark empowerment yep. when he spoke and mesmerizing other Not just a psychological mesmerizing, though he might have been trained, but Eckhart and the sorcerers behind him. People don't know about the villagot, the other sorcerers. They don't know the dark side that was there. The entire Nazi ideology came from spiritual revelation. And that deception led to what? Utter destruction. Tom and I were in Auschwitz a year and a half ago. On a gloomy, rainy, cold day, I, we met up with a, a Polish listener to the Ragged Edge Radio, Merrick Solwinner, just loves... In Poland, it's like the 1950s. The neighborhoods, kids on bike, the way the clothes are, it's like the 1950s. Families. Merrick took us around, just a soul winner. He's just a soul winner in Poland. But they fear Russia, they fear both sides and so forth. But he wanted to take, he said, I want to take you to Auschwitz. 
And so we came out of a na Polish neighborhood, and you turn a corner, and then, you, then you're, there, there you are in that square of Auschwitz. You know, where work will set you free. We went through the gates, went inside, and saw the tons of hair, the tons of shoes, the tons of glasses. And saw the pictures of kids and people and faces. And saw the skinny little tiny, you know, bodies that were like skeletons. And, you know, they had this meeting called the uh, Final Solution where they met and, and calculated what they're going to do, how they're going to take so many. I went down the little cobbler street where the uh, trains would come in to let the people out. When I'm standing there, the lady in front of me says, that's where, that's where Mingala stood. And Mingala would decide, the doctor, he would decide, you know, who goes to what side of the camp. Then when we went into the um, ovens, it's scary. Because you don't, you don't want anybody to close the door on you behind you. Because it's just a low ceiling, square death chamber. And then from there, when it's over with them, they take them through. And you can walk up and you can touch the I, I walked up to touch the oven. Then I decided not to. I wanted to spit on it. By design, the ovens were made to shovel hundreds per day in so that they can be shoved out the other end. The factory was blowing human ash in the air that sometimes was two foot deep in places. Spiritual ideology became political. Spiritual revelation became political ideology. In the beast system to come, all of the political ideology is charged. And the greatest destruction in human history is coming to the billions. You know what that makes me do? It outreaches me. God, give us every ounce of your power. Help us in every way. Keep my body going. Strengthen in every let's, you, we get, it, All it does is motivate me. More souls, more stuff, more equipping the saints, more stuff. More meetings like this. I mean, you're the heroes coming in here. You've, you've traveled all over the place. You're coming here. I mean, I'm, I'm already hot and sweating, and I got five more hours to go, and I'm like... <laughs> Who cares? I was trying to calculate how oh, I got to get home then because I got to work on tomorrow. Then I got to speak twice tomorrow. It's like, like Jesus said, you know what, really, what he was saying to me? I, I interpreted it this way. He was saying, just stop it. You know, you'll be all right. You know, it's like, chill out. Uh, you'll be okay. I'm here. Um, take a look. Uh, speakers, uh, demons using people and speaking through them. Uh, demons using people... Um, uh, to do counterfeit miracles. And then one area that we don't know about in the body of Christ is demons using people to do rituals and spells and summonings, summoning and sending. Much of the body of Christ doesn't know regular warfare, let alone the advanced stuff. We'll talk about the, this afternoon where people are able to summon a demon and send it, put it on an object, bring it to your church. Just like in the Old Testament days, devoted demonized objects, tribes all around that were sacrificing children and humans and so forth. Israel had to constantly deal with that. America is in America from, you know, we're not in Kansas any longer, <laughs> right? We're just not. And what you've seen in the last 30 years, it's just going to go faster and faster. 30 years ago, there might have been 100,000 summoners and so forth that can do things maybe. But I'm going to tell you today in the afternoon, I'll give you some stats on this. I believe there's probably 10 million that know how to summon, conjure, and they know warfare and how to send, create trouble, and train to do it against the body of Christ. Let's, um, let's take a, a five-minute uh, bathroom break, and then we're going to come back for the slides. The sheer numbers we'll talk about. <laughs>